Hey folks, welcome to Local Chat! Can you believe it's already episode 23? That's crazy. The date, June 6th, not June 6th, damn it, <laughs> June 10th, 2021. I saw 6 10 21 and I said June 6th. Shut up, Ian. Uh, I am your host, Will Crosby. Joining me today is the lovely Ian Gibson. Hello, yes, I am lovely, and yes, my name is Ian Gibson, and yes, it is D Day 1944. <laughs> We're coming in hot. Uh, also joining us is the illustrious Kyle Bailey. It's me. I'm very orange right now because my camera keeps trying to me a tan. Oompa loompa. Folks, we are a gaming podcast. We talk about gaming news, what we've been playing, and we do all sorts of other things. Oh, like decoupage and uh, like uh, pastels. We like to draw with pastels. But before we get to the drawing section of the uh, podcast, first we got to talk about what we've been playing. I'm going to start with Ian Gibson today because he's the most disappointing person in the world. Ian, what you been uh, playing? Um, uh, so I've continued to play Mass Effect 2. I, I don't have much more to add on it. I actually was trying to finish the game before this week so i could talk about it before i go on vacation next week i i still want to finish it before i go on vacation but um it's still just astonishing to me that um i i mentioned it last week uh, i don't know how many hours i've actually put into mass effect 2 because the save file is buggy and is not displaying the correct time <laughs> basically on one console it says i'm one console it says I've played for 45 minutes. The other console says I've played for 90 hours. Um, I did a little bit of math using the Xbox app, um, and I think I have about 20 to 25 hours into that game. And it's still astonishing to me that the main story has basically not progressed at all. Like, <laughs> like that game is just, it's just entirely like side missions where the, the, the elusive man is basically just like, look, I know there's serious things happening in the galaxy, but instead of that, I need you to go hunt down all 12 of these people and make them part of your crew, which is completely separate from the main story because the Reapers can wait. And it's just like, no, no. <laughs> Like, I really want to progress the main story, but at the same time, I know I should I should get my crew together because those are the other main missions. And it's just like, and then you get the crew and then the crew's like, I can't, I can't really help you. Like, like they can help you, but, but they frame every single one of them as like, we're not sure if this crew member is loyal or like the crew member's not entirely focused on the mission until you do their, their loyalty mission. Like that's <laughs> literally in the text for every single one of them is some, some skew of like, they may shoot you in the back unless you help them out first. And it's just like, so it's so weird. Like I'm having fun in the game and I'm doing all these basically their main quest, but they all feel like side quests because none of them have anything to do with the main story. And I just want to like find out what's happening in the main story. And so I'm at the point where I think I've got all my crew together and I'm about to progress the main story. But um, I'm still enjoying it. I am slowing down a little bit. And honestly, I think that's because they are just not progressing the main story enough. So there's not that through line. And there's only a, a certain number of side quests you can throw me in to explore the world before I go okay, I'm getting a little bored. Give me something bigger here, you know? Am I making any there's, sense on that? There's there's also, when I first played it, the only DLC that they have was uh, the guy you meet on Omega, the, like, the, the scarred-up mercenary dude. He was, like, the day one, like, that was oh, it. So it was, like, uh... eight, eight people plus him. And now I feel like there's, like, way more characters for you to potentially get. And there's, it, I think there's 12 slots, so I'm assuming there's 12 total. I was, I was gonna yeah. say, does it, um, does it tell you what the DLC stuff is or no? It does not, but it, some of it, like I know the, I think the Firewalker stuff is DLC. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so some of the missions are like Firewalker colon this planet name or whatever. Yeah. And, but those are all side stuff. So I'm, I'm surprised. I didn't know that they added main crew members. Yeah. There's, I think DLC. there's only, I think a Kasumi and oh, I K Kane. Or, I, I think they're the only it's two. With the K, yeah. But I'm I'm just curious if it's telling you that. Uh, not that that's a huge part of what your no. somewhat complaint is, but that is two extra people whose stuff you have to do yeah. that normally that is, someone might not have yeah. to do. 
<laughs> well, in in addition to the characters, like there is that Firewalker stuff. There is how many DLCs were released for Mass Effect Two? Because I when I played it, it was just the first guy. Like I didn't have the Firewalker stuff. I didn't have the Kasumi. I didn't have any of the other side mission stuff. So maybe that's sort of like now that you but have I'm, everything. Like I don't know. Maybe it just feels like it's too much. But I I when I started to feel it, I stopped doing all the side mission stuff. Like I'm just focusing on main missions. Yeah. And the main missions so far are like two or three story missions and then 11 crew missions. Yeah. And it's just like, there's a oh, lot. Zayi, I, I, that's his name. Yeah. The, see, they're presenting those as like main crew. I didn't even know those were DLC. Um, but it's just, it's just weird because the other thing that really hurts it, I think, is in Mass Effect 1, you met the crew... <sighs> I mean, it's hard for me to go through all six of them in my head real quick, but a majority of the crew you meet as you're going through the main story. Mm -hmm. You know, you come across them and they help you out, whereas a majority of the crew in Mass Effect 2 is just, like, completely unrelated to the main story, and they're just like, hey, we heard there's this guy over here who's a real good assassin. You should go meet him and be friends with him. And it's just like, okay, that's fun, but it has absolutely nothing to do with the main story. And so it's like... <laughs> I, I played it a lot more than Mass Effect 1 at this point by at least like five, six hours. But uh, I'm starting to slow down and I'm getting to the point where I'm going to have to force myself to keep playing the game because there's not that main through line punching me through and, yeah. or like dragging me, pulling me through it. And so it's 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 a little weird. That's all. Yeah, there's and there's a lot of DLC like um like shadow brokers dlc arrivals dlc like there's all sorts of dlc that's probably just in the game for you that i'm not saying but you would know what is main and what isn't dlc um, wait wait a minute so the, the shadow broker where you you spoiler alert you track down and kill this the shadow broker yeah that's that's, that's all dlc, DLC. that's yeah. one huge yep. dlc yeah and that was like a late edition that, that yeah, was like that's one of the last dlcs Okay, see that that's presented as a main mission, like yeah. you know, there's like the primary and the secondary tab or whatever they call it. That's a primary thing. Um, yeah, so that's probably yeah, a bunch so that, chunk that, of time that you spent doing that. Yeah, definitely, because that was like probably ninety minutes total. So I'm, I'm, I'll, I'm that that makes me a little bit less hesitant about my conviction. I'm, I'm excited now to finish the game and go back and see how much of it was DLC that is artificially inflating it um i i hope that's what it was because if it wasn't then it's it's kind of disappointing for me um but yeah that's that's mostly it for mass effect 2 so hopefully two weeks time when i'm back i will have finished the game and we'll be able to deliver my <sighs> final verdict um, dun, dun. The, the other game i've been playing look um i'm a weak man okay <laughs> battlefield 2042 got announced yesterday and um, we'll talk about it in the news, but it got me uh, kind of excited and it got me nostalgic about Battlefield. Plus, we talked about it last week on the show and uh, we were talking about it in the community, Subpixel community discord. Check it out. And um, look, I, I got Battlefield 2 installed and I, I found a way to play on modern servers and there's a decent number of people playing and I've probably played an hour or two <laughs> since last night. <laughs> um, do you, did you guys ever play Battlefield 2? Uh, no, I've a little bit only ever played Battlefield Three. Battlefield and... Two, man, it's 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 yeah. just like it's just so nostalgic. It feels like the perfect bridge between Battlefield nineteen forty two Vietnam and um, the modern battlefields because it started mm. to get more of that modern feel, but it still had a lot of that that classic fun to it, and it's just so nostalgic, like. Like I, I'm sure, you, completely unrelated to Battlefield, but it's like when you pick up a game that you haven't played in a decade, but that you played literally hundreds of hours of, and it's like every single sound effect, every single little thing gives you so much nostalgia, and it's just like, ooh, baby, you know, it feels so good. You guys ever have that when you pick up an old game? Yeah, yeah, oh, that's so good. Um, one other thing I will say about it is, um. It actually holds up slightly better than I remember it because I remember it having like really bad aim. Like you would have somebody like 20 feet in front of you and you'd, you'd click the trigger on like an M16 and it would just all of a sudden like go around them. Like it, it literally had randomized accuracy in it to an extent, but it's actually not, not as bad as I remember it. Like I was killing people 60, 70 yards 
with a P90. Like I was, I was doing okay. Um, but I, there was one crazy thing about it. So I was playing it last night and I was on a server and the server started loading a new map and I was looking at it. <laughs> I was looking at it. Okay. And I looked at the picture of the map because the way it loads is it has like the fake satellite imagery of the map and then it has a description of the map. And the description says like, this takes place in like Lancaster, Pennsylvania in like Dutch country, you know, like the Middle Eastern coalition is invading the US has to protect or whatever. And I was like, oh, Lancaster. And then I looked at the map and I was like, I know that place. And, <laughs> and it was very creepy because I got into the map and by the satellite imagery, I was like, I, I know that bridge and I was playing it. And I was like, I know this bridge because I was going to a wedding once and I forgot the turn because it was right before the bridge. So I had to go across the bridge and then turn around and come back across the bridge. And it's like this double bridge over a river. And I was like, this is really weird. And then I, and then I finished playing the game and I booted it up on Google Earth. And it is 100% the bridge that I have been to. Like, wow. it was just such a... It's like such a, it's it's not like, like we've talked about the division before and Will, how like you really like playing the division because you just moved to Manhattan and like it was locations that you knew, right? Yeah. Um, I I think this is a lot different because this is just a bridge in the middle of freaking nowhere west of Lancaster, Pennsylvania. And I was literally just like, I know this place. This is <laughs> so weird. Like it was just crazy, you know, it's just... Yeah, have you guys ever had that moment in a video game where you like you come across a space and all of a sudden you realize, oh, this is based off reality, and I've been here. They they did that in uh, Call of Duty Black Ops recently, Cold Cold War, whatever it was. They remade the Cherry Hill Mall, which I've been to many, oh. many, many times, and it was like very surreal. Um, and it, obviously, it's, it wasn't like one to one, but yeah, it was the, it was the Cherry Hill Mall in a video game. So it's weird to see. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, it's. Just, just something I wanted to touch on. Just one of those weird video game moments where, like, uh, video games are like completely virtual spaces, and and we've talked before about how like one of the things they do in video game design is that hallways and interior spaces are almost never the correct scale to your character because oh, it yeah. feels too claustrophobic, and it it makes perfect sense. And so it's it's a very made up digital virtual space. So to come across something that is not explicitly a simulation but is very close enough to a real world place that you've been before that you're like, I, I know this place is just, it's crazy. It's crazy. It's like magic. Um, anyways, Kyle, tell me what you've been playing. Not much. Uh, this week I was super busy. So uh, pretty much just Apex and Destiny 2. More Apex than Destiny 2. Um, it's just been a busy week for me. So Apex is kind of nice to, I've sort of, stopped playing warzone as much because i i it's just worn out for me the the update to it that happened what a month ago or two months ago it just uh -huh. it, it wasn't enough of an update to hold my attention so i figured i'd switch over to apex which is a completely different style completely different gameplay um and i've been having a good time with it when you play when you play with friends who are like either equally as bad or can carry you it's normally a good time even when you're losing so i've been having fun with yeah. that so quick question I have about Apex is yeah. um, we, tr uh, we tried playing it a little bit a couple months ago and I heard rumors about it beforehand. What, what's this crafting system they have in the game? How does that work? What is that? I don't I haven't played it that much to know about a crafting system. There's isn't like there like like you break down certain items or you like pick up a currency and then you go to stations in the game and you craft new items out of the station. Yeah. I it's not even for me it, it's not even like that like you can get currency like not like actual currency your character can get certain like energy bits or whatever uh -huh. and then i i think you, you can go to like a thing and buy stuff kind of like think. like yeah, warzone that's... currency like picking up money yeah it's like kind of like that i think there is a mechanic where you can break stuff down I haven't played Apex enough to even get to that level where I'm thinking about doing that. I'm okay. mainly just focused on like, I need a better gun. I need better attachments. I, I need to learn how to crouch and move while people are shooting at me. So, you know, I'm very still, I, I'm like level 12 or 13, so I'm not even that good. But yeah, it, it's there. I mostly ignore it. Got it. Yeah, because it's just that that was, I remember hearing that was kind of a big change because when we played it and we beat it um, on stream, hell yeah. That was not in the game at all. It was just straight pick up loot. There was no currency. There was no go to a station to buy things, et cetera. So yeah. I'm, 
kind of curious. I don't know if I would like it or not. The one time we touched it a couple months ago, it seemed a little weird, but yeah, I, I'm just, it, it's just, it's, it doesn't draw my interest like that, like crafting mm -hmm. in video games, it has to be done right. And it also has to be the right video game for that. And for me, apex is just way too fast paced for me to focus on doing that. At least right now, yeah. I do like the new, um, versus mode that they added in where it's three V three. That's actually really fun. Um, because you can have, I think, up to eight rounds against the same team, mm -hmm. ending in like a sudden death round, and it's it. That's that's always really fun. And if you're doing really bad in the battle royale mode, you can switch to that really easily. Uh, the, I, I gotta say, the one thing I love about Apex is how quick it is. Just loading in yeah. and out, it, like Warzone takes forever, and there's yeah. always like yeah. glitches and and people drop out of your party. I've never had an issue with Apex. It's just so well. Um, it, everything's so well implemented and it, it flows really nicely. So I would play it just for the speed of being able to hop into a game whenever I want. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, yeah. So I've been having fun with Apex. So. Thanks. Um, I, uh, who's someone else's, I think Chris was talking to me about Apex today and it made me think about playing it a little bit more again. He loves to play that. Same with Valorant, but eh. Mm. Yeah, I would like to do a stream again uh, yeah. if they add some more stuff. Um, for me, for moi, um, still playing Dragon Quest VIII. I think I have about like five-ish hours left, and I have been kind of putting it off. But by putting that off, I have not committed to a new long game to play. So I need to just, this weekend, take those five hours, beat Dragon Quest VIII, so I can put my 3DS away and either move on to like Dragon Quest XI on the Xbox or maybe play Final Fantasy or break out my NES Classic, stuff like that. Um, this week, though, I played Yes, Your Grace, which is a game uh, by Brave at Night. It was kickstarted, uh, I think I have it here, in 2000. And 15. Uh, it is on Xbox Game Pass. It is a management game where you play the King of Davern, and uh, you so you kind of start. It's week by week, side scroller. You have different rooms of the castle that you go to. So there's like the dungeon, the gardens, all that sort of stuff. Uh, so you are the king. You listen to the uh, people come up and tell you what's wrong. They're like, oh, my farm was raided. Can you give me money? Can you give me supplies? Can you send a general to go uh, attack? So you kind of choose, hey, can I give up money? Can I give up supplies? Can I give up this agent of mine for two weeks? Uh, and so sometimes it screws you because you'll give the first guy the general and then the third guy only needs a general and won't take money or supplies so it's kind of mix and match and then outside of that um you are doing alliances with other kings uh you are tending to your family uh it's not uh open it's not like some randomized open thing it is following a set storyline so like mm -hmm. certain things specifically happen um and they're meant to happen so you're playing through the campaign pretty much uh what you choose to do obviously can be random and it actually does uh i was looking at the achievements after i finished the game like there were a lot of things that i didn't even consider doing that i could have done um and really mixed up the game so it, it, it was fun it was a good experience uh yeah i ran into a couple bugs uh not game breaking bugs at all mostly like cosmetic and like weird bugs um but overall i enjoyed it uh, it's on game pass so i would definitely recommend checking it out it was cute at times um and fun and uh the only thing if i were to give them a point of criticism is you have to walk out of each room to go to each room to talk to all the different people. And I get why you do that, but if I could just go to a menu and talk to everyone in a menu, I would much prefer that. But I think that's the like simulation person in me where I just want to get stuff done. Um, but yeah, that was kind I, of the I, only I'll, thing. I, I, I'll kind of offer a tangent for that. I think that's a valid complaint because something that the Mass Effect series does incredibly well is they present you with a mission and the mission is like, go through this area and kill this guy. Right. So you go through the area and you kill the guy and you do like the final cutscene, like talking with them. And then at the end of the cutscene, 
they immediately take you back either to your ship or to the main area that was to the open. Like they do all sorts of stuff like that, where it's just like, we know where you're trying to go next. There's only one place you're trying to go. We're not going to make you walk to that. Mm -hmm. We're not going to make you walk up and interact with the door or do something like that. And, and I feel like there are a lot of games that need to do that to be like, it's not like taking control away from the player. It's like know where the player is going and either show that as a cutscene or as a jump cut. There's no need to make them constantly play that action out. Um, so, so I don't know that it should just be a menu, but there's definitely ways to just be like quick, jump me to this room and then I'll walk to the person, you know, yeah. like there's, there's no need to do that. That repetitive action is, it's something that that's becoming more obvious to me as a flaw in game design because of how well mass effect does it. Yeah, totally. Uh, but overall, I definitely recommend checking it out. It was a fun time. It was only probably like four or five hours total. Um, so yeah. Uh, also, uh, I have been playing a lot of Sea of Thieves with um, Karen and her regular game group that she plays with. They kind of got, they were sick of the stress of Warzone and Dead by Daylight. So they were taking a break and just playing Sea of Thieves, which is great because it's on Game Pass. So we've been playing a bunch of that. That game is a lot more fun when you have a crew of four people who all know what they're doing. Um, like like reading the map yeah like, like reading the map um <laughs> doing sales like all that sort of stuff like yeah. you still like crash into things but it's like when you're just playing the game to have fun uh it's more like light-hearted i guess is like yeah. you're not trying to force to do it for entertainment or something so we're just we're going through like tall tales uh it's still the gameplay loop of sea of thieves which i'm really not that into which is go pick up treasure sell treasure yeah. at least the tall tales really break that monotony up but i will say my issue so we did one of the tall tales and all of the guides for tall tales on the internet just tell you where to go they don't tell you how to do the step of the tall tale so like i had this one tall tale that was like you read it says um the this island loves to sing and so and then it shows an arrow from that pointing to a fish and then it shows an arrow from that pointing to a totem so i go to a guide and i'm like oh i want to know what to do and it says oh go to the uncharted island in n13 i'm like how am I supposed to know to go to that aisle? And so I finally figured it out. You're supposed to see that the aisle that likes to sing is Snake Isle because the constellation snake is the singing snake that it tells you in the book. Uh, this is it, this is easier than what I'm explaining. This is all information presented to you in the Tall Tale book. And then you go to this the Snake Isle. You look for the fish constellation. And then you sail towards the fish constellation and you end up in N13 at an uncharted island. That's great, but I didn't find. I went through just to check fifteen different websites guides to try and find that, and this was on every step of this tall tale. It just told you where to go, and it, it's not. That, that takes the that takes the fun out of it. It takes you know, the fun out of it, and it has nothing to do with Sea of Thieves. It's these guide writers, which again, making guides is hard. I understand that, but I was mad because I just wanted a little bit of help, and it was just like, yeah. boom, here's the answer. I'm like, ugh. So yeah. I. I after I saw that first one, like we were able to figure out the other ones, but it was just annoying because once I see the answer and we're all going through the steps, I don't want to sit there and pretend I don't know what the answer is. But um, yeah. regardless, uh, Sea of Thieves is nice and calming. I, I just like the sailing. Um, that game looks beautiful in 4K. Um, Man, I, w I was just thinking about Sea of Thieves the other day because it's just like an inc it's like an example of like an incredible game that is ruined by like very small like obviously incorrect design choices like um for example the fact that you can only carry a limited number of cannonballs on your ship because i feel like 90 percent of the sea battles that we got into and when when i was playing that i got into was like it wasn't that you got sunk or the other person got sunk it's that one of you ran out of cannonballs and yeah. then it was just like that takes the complete fun out of it and it, it's just like little tiny design choices that like that that just I don't want to say ruin the game, but man, they, 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 they really mar the experience for me. Yeah. It's, it's, it's annoying. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, uh, uh, that game's just fun. I like, it's good to sail in that game and, and play music. 
feels so good. The yeah. music system in that game is incredible because whoever starts playing first is playing the melody and then everyone is back up. But as soon as the first person stops playing, someone else picks up the melody. So you like never drop the song and you can just like switch around and it, it's really good. Um, and last but not least, uh, I, I tried Moonlighter, which I is on Game Pass, but I also think I own it for some reason. I'm not sure why. Uh, I spent about half an hour in it. I think I'm going to give it another half an hour, but I really wasn't into what it was offering. I thought the systems were cool. So you're basically this dungeoneer who at night you go into the dungeons and then during the day you sell your items in your store, which on paper sounds pretty good, but you have to set the prices of your items, watch customer reactions, and then adjust them from your customers' reactions. But then it, it wasn't updating my reaction book in real time i had to wait till you went to bed that night to then like solidify the options and then mm -hmm. some it was hard to navigate the menus i i just really wasn't into it um so it's like la noir mixed with papers please mixed with a dungeon crawler yeah pretty much yeah, a little bit yeah. There's um, there's um, some other games I can't remember the names of them, but it's basically the same genre, and I think they came Rec Reketeer, I believe Reketeer is what it's called, um, where basically like you're a shopkeeper and you're setting prices and you can kind of start to manipulate the market based on your customer base. Yeah, but you're also in charge of collecting the goods. And there's that other game that uh, we watched a review of. I can't remember what it's called. Merchant's Guild, it might be. Um, but the and the dungeon part combat and all that sort of stuff wasn't as exciting for me either. <laughs> excuse me seltzer burps wow um i wasn't yeah i was i really wasn't into it overall i'm gonna try it again might have just been the mood i was in or, or how i was finding it but uh yeah so i i'm kind of on the search for a new game uh at least to take my full attention uh versus like rim world is what i just play and watch videos uh, but yeah, that's it for what I've been playing, which means uh, it is time to move towards the news. And y'all all know, know what that means. It means we get to play the news theme, which goes as this. Here's the news. We're talking about news. It's gaming news. What's up, news? What's up, news folks? Lots of news this week, including news items. Uh, who wants to start? I'll start. I've got some. I've got uh, a couple quick items. Um, Dark Horse, which is a comic book company publisher, wants to bring its comic icons into games. Um, they own the rights to Hellboy and uh 300 <gasps> and i don't know what else honestly it used to be star um, wars i don't know i i don't know how i feel about this i feel like on the one hand it's like yeah sure bring these ips in that haven't really been touched by video games that much let's see what you can make but on the other hand there are a lot of people just trying to do what uh marvel did with the mcu and failing miserably at it and the mcu is not that great in the first place so i'm kind of just like uh, I don't know that I I, I I have a shot at it, but don't don't mess it up. How how are you guys feeling about about more more comics being brought into the games media space, etc.? If it makes sense, I think I think Hellboy would be cool. That's exactly what I was going to say. Hellboy would be, yeah. I would I would be interested in that, but yeah, if you do it right, it would be killer. I want Richie yeah. Rich the video game. <laughs> um, I've I've got another quick hit. I'll just touch on real quick. So Xbox, Microsoft has confirmed that AMD's Fidelity FX Super Resolution tech is coming to the Xbox. Don't worry, that's kind of a bit of a word salad. But if you remember, NVIDIA has their DLSS technology, which basically allows them to take a, uh, let's say, for example, a 1080p output from a video game and upscale it to 4K using machine learning and have it literally look better and run better than not just the 1080p version, but also that game's native 4K version. So that's also a bit of a word salad, I realize. But basically, it's a technology that takes a game that is not running that well at a lower resolution, and it makes it run at a much higher resolution and at a much higher frame rate, in some cases almost double, wow. um, which is insane. So this is basically taking AMD's version of that technology and putting it on 
the Xbox uh, at some point in the future. So, um, you know, for example, I'm looking at, uh, um, this is an image from a, um, I don't know what this image is from, but anyways, they say that <laughs> natively it's running at 4K with ray tracing, 49 frames per second on a, a top of the line Radeon card. Um, depending on which quality you pick, you can look at 78 frames per second, 99 frames per second, 124 frames per second, or 150 frames per second just by turning on this super resolution tech, which again makes the game look better and run faster. Um, it's literally graphics magic, and I'm excited to see this brought to the Xbox because there are still some games that run a little wonky on the Xbox that can't quite hit 4K60, um, and I, I would love for them to hit that. Just just some cool stuff there. Any any thoughts on you guys from that? That's exciting. Um, yeah, it it is exciting. It's really cool. I will say um, Fidelity FX, which is the AMD version of DLSS, it's in its first iteration right now. And if yeah. you guys remember when DLSS first came out, the first iteration was not very good. Not to say that Fidelity FX can't be good, but it will drastically improve or it should drastically improve if we're following what happened with NVIDIA when DLSS 2.0 came out. It was like magic, like literal magic. And people were yeah. so ridiculously impressed. I think while this is cool, it may take maybe one more generation uh, or updates of current gen consoles to like the 2.0 versions of consoles for it to really, really make like a, a super satisfying difference but we'll see because you know stuff's different with consoles than it is for pc but um just be aware that the fidelity fx is still in its first go around yeah. and, and to be clear it hasn't even been enabled on the xbox yet they're just saying that the yeah. xbox will support it at some point in the future yeah oh uh, and also it, it has to be it has to be enabled per game with support from those game developers so it's also it's not quite a magic bullet but when it works baby does it <laughs> Yeah. It's it's exciting that that's being implemented more because that will, I mean, for what, the past 10 years before all this machine learning stuff, it has been more powerful card, better game performance. And now it's like, yeah. it doesn't necessarily have to be that way anymore. So I think it's really yeah. cool. And one, one of the cooler gaming technologies that's been in development for the past like two years. So I, I'm glad we're seeing results. Yep. Um, Kyle, you got any stories you want to pick? Um, I actually just added this one. It's not a story so much as it, as it is a rumor. Uh, there was a possible leaked image from the Halo TV series. Um, it was promptly taken down, as was the trailer that it was leaked from, which probably means that we're going to get some sort of a Halo TV teaser trailer kind of thing at E3. Uh, Fancy. It's, it's of Master Chief. And... Crazily, it looks exactly like Master Chief from the video games. So, <gasps> good job, I guess. You can you can do what you already did. Uh, and then there's another one of one of the Sangili uh, aliens or whatever, however you pronounce that name. Yeah, I think that's right. It looks, it looks okay. It looks okay. It's. I mean, yeah. Just images. Did you guys, but... did you guys ever watch the other Halo TV show? Um, I watched so the. I, uh, I have the, calls the it. DVD of like the short films. I forget what it was called. Why the, can't I think no, of um, the dirt? Neil Blomkamp. For, for, no, I'm talking about Forward Unto Dawn. Yeah, yeah. No, I know. Like a, I know what you're talking about. I'm saying the only ones I've yeah. seen are the Neil Blomkamp ones. Oh, okay. Yeah, for yeah. Halo Three. Yeah, Forward Unto Dawn. Surprisingly good. Surprisingly yeah, really good. It was interesting. Um, so I'm I'm looking forward to this. I I have very I have very little reason to think it will be good. But I believe in the source material, so have at it. You know what I mean? I like, I believe in the source material, and it's been done well before. So that's the only reason why I'm a little bit confident in this. But completely different people, different times, et cetera. But fingers crossed they do it just as good. At one point, Steven Spielberg was attached to it. I don't know if that's still the case or if he's in any way producing or, or whatever. But mm. I just remember them announcing that like six years ago. Or, or five yeah. years, like it was a really long time. And they were like, Halo is coming to TV. And I remember it was one of the, uh, I can't remember her name. One of the execs from, from 343 came out and Steven Spielberg came out with her, I think. And I was like, okay, like show me what you got. And yeah. then as Halo always happens, whenever it tries to transition outside of any medium other than video games, it just fell apart and we never heard anything. So yeah. Uh, it's, it's it's just a matter of throwing money at it and then 
keeping your word. I, so. Yeah, I mean, yeah. But the other thing is, I, I also remember I read the original years ago. I read the um, the Alex Garland Halo screenplay, which was mm. not not that good because it was basically just like it was just Halo the video game, but as a movie, which it, <laughs> it doesn't quite work out. You know, it's, it becomes like a mediocre action movie. In a How's way. that Warthog so, run at the end? <laughs> Yeah, that six kilometer run. Yeah, so so it's just like it, it's like I'm I'm very optimistic for this. They've done great things with it in the past, but at the same time, it would be very very easy to make just like a mediocre ass Halo property. You know, <laughs> be very easy to just do that. So totally, yes. I, I I do like the idea. Um, like you said, uh, Kyle, that I, I hadn't even thought about it, but. Maybe we see this at E3. That would be fantastic. Let's. I want to see that trailer. That would be. That would be that, awesome. I feel like that would make the most sense as premiering it during the Xbox yeah. Halo yeah. session during that uh, yeah. thing. Because especially, I, especially if they ended with it, like because I, I don't think that we're going to see anything. Well, will we see anything for Infinite? I th- it has to come out this year. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. It's okay. on. It's on the. They they basically said here's the press conference and it has Master oh, okay. Chief all over it. I'm so. I'm I missed I I haven't looked at the at the stuff. I just know that it's been in development hell because they had they had a bunch of people from their team leave leads yeah. for like leaving. So I wasn't sure if it was still stuck in that that whole. Yeah, the, the game has to come out then. this year. Yeah. Uh, speaking okay. of games that have to come out this year, Battlefield 2042 was revealed. Battle revealed um on yesterday the ninth yeah there was a stream they showed us a trailer uh they have promised a gameplay trailer on the 13th i think no, at the... Xbox show. oh it's at the xbox show okay yeah wait that's on the 13th though right this is the yeah that's the 13th oh, okay yeah that's what i thought um it uh have you ever wanted to have a tornado kind of break up your little fight there and remind you who's in control it's the cloud people the cloud people want to kill us no uh battlefield uh 2042 the happy medium between 1942 and 2142 uh 128 players which has uh isn't that crazy uh um there were more and we talked about this like a while we ago. We did. We did. There, there. I literally played on a Battlefield Two server today that supported 128 people. That's what I'm um, saying. It's it's so. I want it more. has been unofficially larger than 64, but it has never been officially larger than 64. Right. Mm-hmm. So it's 128 on new consoles and I believe PC, while 64 yeah. on older consoles. Um, none of this was gameplay. It was a straight uh, CGI trailer. Although my favorite part was them referring to uh, community stuff from past Battlefield games. They had a guy jump out of a jet, shoot another jet with a rocket launcher, get back in. Uh, they had the ATV fly off and hit the helicopter. Uh, didn't have C4 on it, though. I mean, how do you miss Yeah, it? what the heck? Still got game the job. <laughs> yeah, it's still got it. Uh, there it was confirmed no single player campaign, uh, but it is no a battle royale. no battle royale, no battle yeah. royale. Um, and it's uh, yeah. I, I think if they can do what they've been promising here, I think I'm I'm kind of back in for a battlefield game. I I played what was it two weeks ago? I talked about playing five, and it was just like it was more of this. I feel like since three, it has been more yeah. of the same. Someone um, on Reddit said that the trailer for 2045, 2040, is that what it is? 2042. 2042. 2042. The trailer for that already has more likes than the entire time that the Battlefield 5 trailer has been, around, <laughs> which I, I think is, is yeah. crazy. But yeah. Yeah. So this is exciting. Uh, there's a lot of details out. Um, uh Oh, I just want to is. touch on um, at least one change that is pretty important. You know, they, they keep talking about how they want to make some changes to the series with this. Um, just to, I don't want to say spice things up, but, you know, like we've been saying, it's, it's been a little stale. So they want to refresh some things. They're getting rid of classes. So um, in the Battlefield series up until now, you would be like, I am the assault guy. I get grenades and a grenade launcher and a rifle. I am the medic. So I get, you know, in some games, it was a single shot rifle. In some games, it was the squad automatic weapon. They're not doing that in this game. Instead, they have specialists, which are uh, there. It's not quite heroes, but basically if you choose a specialist, like for example, there's one who specializes in healing. And so they have a syringe gun 
that lets them um, shoot a syringe at somebody. And if it's an enemy, it damages them slowly. If it's a friendly, then it heals them slowly. Um, but they can also revive people at full health. Um, you pick that specialist, but then you get to pick any of the guns to play with that specialist. So you could choose that specialist and be like, I want a sniper rifle. Or you can pick that specialist and say, I want a rocket launcher. Um, mm -hmm. Which is great, because one of the big problems I had with Battlefield previously is that you would basically, you would have to level up classes, but also level up guns within those classes. So the idea is, I, I want to carry a squad automatic weapon, a light machine gun. Okay, well, you have to be a medic because those are the only people who can carry those guns. And then it's like, well, I want to pick this type of gun. It's like, well, no, you have to be playing as a medic and level up this previous gun to get to this next gun. Yeah. And I, I don't think they're completely removing that. You probably still have to level up guns, but the idea that you can pick any gun for any specialist is is fantastic. That sounds great. That That's a lot of variety, letting you play like you want to play and not trying to divide it down into classes. So that's that's one big change they've, they've talked about that sounds like it could be it could be pretty crazy. Yeah, that was the situation I always remembered was wanting to use like an LMG or something. And it's like, I don't want to be tasked with the responsibility of doing these other things just to shoot a gun. Yeah. Um, so it kind of led thing to I a will, lot of that. Yeah, the other thing they're introducing is um, there's other games that have done this, but first time they're doing it in Battlefield is that you have attachments on your weapon, but you can, um, as long as you have those attachments unlocked, you can live swap those out while you're on the Battlefield. So, for example, you have an assault rifle, you're, head, you're going through a building, you have a red dot on it, you head out into the open, you, you can just real quickly via a weapon wheel swap the red dot for a 4X ACOG, and then you're, and then you're able to, to engage enemies across the field. Um, and you can do that with all your weapon attachments. And that sounds awesome, because just like we were talking about the class limiting you, I feel like sometimes when you spawn, you go, I picked the SMG, so I have to go to a close quarters. But with the way they design these maps with different areas, this is really going to let you flow and more easily adapt to the battlefield. Yeah. And uh, they're also adding bots, so you can play against bots and have things yeah. still level up and still uh, progress through your weapons and all this sort of stuff. So I feel like if you're particularly trying to work on something, you can just be like, oh, I'm going to go do some bot stuff. Um, I wonder if there's any way to, like, not, I mean, people could exploit it, but I wonder if there's a way it kind of, like, balances mm -hmm. out. Uh, but we'll have to wait um, until the game comes out. I'm tell you right now, I mean, unless that. if you're leveling up the same between bots and humans, people will absolutely find a way to exploit it. Right. Um, I'm wondering if they're going to have yeah. something that kind of makes it less exploitable. But yeah, I I just really like the idea of uh, I mentioned this in the, the community discord. I don't one of the big reasons why I don't play modern battlefield is because there's a lot of tryhards and campers. So like you spawn in, you're immediately dead because there's somebody rolling around who's like a level 200 with everything maxed out, full attachments, everything. Or there's 10 people in that one spot in the corner that covers this hallway all the way to the end of the map. So if you ever step across that hallway, you're dead. And it's very prohibitive to new players and people who just want to play casually, like myself. So to be able to just spin up a match of Battlefield, but know that it's full of bots and none of them are going to cheese me like that. Yeah. You know, still make them challenging, but none of them are going to cheese me. That's Cheesy happy, bots. Man. I'll, have, I'll have some fun at that. Yeah, yeah. I, I, this is the first Battlefield that I've I've seen the trailer and not even gameplay yet, and I'm just like, you know what? I I, I definitely think I'm gonna check that out come October, Same. unless there's some sort of drastic horrible thing about it. Um, moving on, I I want since it's a little bit later, I want to dive into the summer game fest announcements from today before we uh, tackle any other news. Um, so if y'all follow me to the link, um. I think this kind of goes in order of biggest to smallest mm -hmm. announcements. So we'll kind of jump through these pretty quick. I'm just going to pick and choose. But if I miss something that you want to talk about, just let me know. Um, biggest of all, Keeley got the keys to the kingdom. Elden Ring officially, uh, not announced, but officially gameplay shown in a trailer today with a release date of January 21st, 2022, was announced uh did either of you watch the trailer um i no. i did i watched it at low resolution i'm re-watching it now it's kind of weird because okay it's definitely dark souls Soulsborne gameplay which if you're into that great um i'm gonna say something that's slightly controversial but parts of this game like graphically look great parts of this game graphically don't look that great <laughs> you know yeah, I, I saw some screenshots and i was like 
is this it's, like is this like a really yeah. bad screenshot it's like half next gen half half last gen it's really weird and for a game that they've been working on for so long that has been hyped that much it's like i thought this was gonna be demon souls remake looks better than this and it's like yeah i don't know man i, I am i am i am i off base here will no uh, I, I didn't watch the trailer that closely yet i haven't watched the 4k one but that probably makes sense i mean from software is never crazy into graphics or making things like top of sure. the line fidelity which i'm okay with um i think i haven't played sekiro but i played everything else uh, except demon souls as well um this game i think looks really good i'm definitely excited to explore a new souls universe that isn't dark souls um i mean a lot of the stuff is the same but i think it looks really cool uh especially riding that weird like goat horse and there's like these jump spots and everything mm. um i think it'll be super interesting to see it um save data in the chat saying uh yeah demon souls was a ps5 exclusive uh, and this game's multi-platform so i can see them trying to base everything across all yeah. the consoles but i am very excited this game is multi-platform because i'm always worried with from software uh but yeah it, i think it looks really cool i the mythos they're kind of going into i believe it's somewhat more celtic myth uh will be definitely interesting to check out um but I, i'm just there for their level design their presentation i think playing through that is going to be a blast so it'll be uh definitely worth checking out i hope it's not extremely difficult like i heard sekiro was hopefully they tone it back um but yeah it should be exciting uh moving on nobody cares about this but i'm gonna say it tiny tina's wonderlands uh announced it looked cool until tiny tina arrived and then I, I remembered how much i hate tiny tina i i'm very surprised that they went fantasy on this like fantasy still shooter looter shooter but high fantasy um because i thought it was just going to be another borderlands game i'm probably still not going to play this but i'm honestly surprised that they have like the creative wherewithal to make that decision because by now i thought they were just turning out just like i mean i, I assume Yoder. they do that because of tiny tina's dungeons and dragons and stuff like that but uh oh she is i know nothing about her oh yeah she's like. she's the dlc in borderlands 2 is dungeon Dra you're playing a dungeon dragons campaign that she wrote oh so it's all high fantasy okay. except so I, in in the game it's not it's like cardboard cutouts and stuff you're fighting okay I am not into Borderlands at all. I never got into the series. Is so you're saying Tiny Tina is from the Borderlands series? Yeah, she's a Borderlands yeah. character. Okay. okay. Um Great. so I don't know exactly what this game is, like if this is all in her imagination or something. Um but who knows. I, I thought it, it it looked pretty cool. I, I'll definitely check it out. I I haven't touched Borderlands since 2 um and 2 I didn't I like 2 more than 1, but I never touched 3 or the pre-sequel. Yeah. Pre, I like the actor, sequel. the voice actors that they've got. Yeah, I mean, I'm a fan of all these voice actors, so who knows? Could be incredible. Uh, I wonder if there will be a Medieval Times reference or some sort of USB stick oh, reference, no. or perhaps Cam oh, Girls. Uh, it'll be exciting. Um, moving on, uh, Metal Slug Tactics. Oh baby, this is my this is my pop tart. I like it. This looked real good um metal slug is basically a side-scrolling run and run run and gun classic series they're revising it as a turn-based tactics game but with the same look and feel to an extent and this definitely piqued my interest if they do this right this could be pretty freaking neato what do you guys think is this going to be anything like advanced wars uh no and the reason why i say no is because advanced wars is like strategic map view yeah. this is like the, uh, will correct me this is isometric of like a battlefield and yeah okay. and so you're it's like final fantasy guys. tactics or that project triangle they recently announced okay yeah that's what it looks yeah. like so it's it's basically like a like a 2d side scroller but turned isometric and you're looking at it top down you got little metal slug guys running around throwing grenades like calling in airstrikes on like cartoony tanks yeah. it i love the i've always loved the look of metal slug um and i can't wait to play this this looks really good yeah, I think it looks awesome. There's a slight controversy with the current new owner of SNK that was coming up all over Twitter, who is a um, 
accused murderer and uh torturer Whoa. so that's great oh, um wow. i thought i thought you were gonna say pedophilic magician no uh this is uh, i can't look it up right now but it's the it's the one of the saudi princes who oh. ordered the murder oh. of a journalist and all sorts of other stuff so it's, it's a mixed it's bag true. but uh you know, at this point, society doesn't really care where things come from. But uh, I just figured people should be aware of that. Um, it's definitely made me think about possibly supporting this. Uh, moving on, uh, my favorite announcement from the day. My favorite, favorite I, okay, announcement. We have to talk about this because I, I need some clarity here because I had this going with no sound while I had like a six-hour work meeting going on. So I was kind of paying attention. But it looked like Kojima had an interview in which he basically said that Death Stranding has a lot of flaws and is not very good and he wanted to do better in the future and then yes. announced Death Stranding director's cut. Is that what happened? <laughs> he was talking... I, I was... I mean, I was live streaming during it, so I was like trying to half pay attention. But he was saying how after, I don't know why, I mean, it affected a lot of people. After 9 11, he rethought, he kept wait, saying 9 11. He off. rethought a lot of his creative process. Now, I don't know if that's because the Metal Gear games at the time were very into geopolitical strife, the world at large, and the last game he had worked on, I think before that, was. Two. So I wonder if Two. that uh, made a lot of sense. That's New York based, all that sort of stuff. Then he said, after Death Stranding and then the pandemic happening, it made him again rethink his creative process, in which he said he understands there's flaws in Death Stranding, all that sort of stuff. Now, me personally, I assumed he was referring to whatever he's working on next. But after that, they announced Death Stranding Director's Cut, which I am very excited for because <laughs> I unabashedly love everything about Death Stranding except for yes. the crappy storyline. Okay, I have to cut in here because the whole, like, like historically the point of a director's cut is that somebody came in and screwed the director over and this is the chance to make their vision. And the problem with Death Stranding is that nobody stepped in there and stopped the director from <laughs> making their vision. <laughs> As far as, we know, as far as it we know, as far as we know, it needs a producer's cut. It needs a publisher's cut. It needs an anybody but Kojima cut. Is what. But it so needs. that's what I'm wondering. I wonder if someone came in and helped him with his create. Like famous, uh, I believe he, the editor he had on all his Metal Gear games wasn't around for Death Stranding, and I don't know why. But um, there's pl probably plenty of reasons. But I wonder if rethinking this creative process has worked at all who knows i'm I, I mean i'm gonna buy this and check it out so you'll uh you'll have my opinion on it in a video at some point um i'm very excited to check it out uh it was it, most of the trailer was or all the trailer was sam looking at like a st all these people sneaking around and then he grabs a box empties it out and then jumps in the box like snake bunch of oranges in it yeah and then he yeah. puts the box back so I'm trying to figure out if, like, this is a lo location he is in is not in the game. So I'm yeah. wondering if they're trying to be like, oh, Kojima added, like, interiors or this, like, sneaking stuff. Who knows? I, those were all new things there. So this director's cut, it could just be the same game but tighter. It could be the same game but way worse because it's filled out with Kojima stuff. Or it could be almost a completely different game. Who knows what he's doing? I'm just, I, I'll be there to check it out, so... If if I had to guess, it's going to be largely the same game with a few added like interior sections, right? Like maybe yeah. some sneak and sneak and shoot gameplay stuff like that. Because they really didn't. If if there was like one big complaint I had with Death Stranding, it was the enemy types that you meet that can actually shoot you. They they like never do anything with them. Yeah, like they're they're like not really in the story. So I feel like. This might dive more into who those guys are. The, the what are, I forget what they're called, like the, the nomads or the, the mercenaries. Or yeah, the mules. The mules. Um, they just exist in the world, and and it's sort of just a expository dialogue saying, "Oh yeah, watch out for the mules." So I think maybe this will dive more into that, and then maybe some tweaks to like core gameplay stuff as far as the delivery system stuff and and making it. A little bit easier to manage for players who want that experience or maybe more complex for players who you know are really into delivery management system interplay in video games god i love it it's great yeah um the other thing with this is that death stranding is a ps4 pc game 
this director's cut is for the PS5, so this will bring a next-gen upgrade. Yeah. I am very excited. Uh, definitely be checking that out, so keep your eyes on the subscription feed on YouTube, folks. Uh, no date with that as well, so uh, I assume probably this year. Who knows? Um, anyone interested in World Jurassic World Evolution 2? No. Nope. Okay, I heard uh, one was know, good. I'm honestly, I'm, I'm scrolling through. Sable, which is the fantastic desert sci-fi artistic uh, land speeder game, Finally got a release date, September 23rd, 2021. Um, I'm trying to think of Salt and Sacrifice got announced. Sequel to Salt and Sanctuary. Um, yeah, and then uh, that Planet of Lana game I thought looked really cool. Yeah, uh, it was good. almost like a Studio Ghibli paintings, uh, the game. Uh, and you're like, it seems like a 2D adventure game with this little fuzzy pal. So that'll be, it almost looked like Inside or uh, Limbo. Sort of thing two point campus that trailer looked pretty good <gasps> I, I i heard great things about two point hospital but i never played it because i don't really care about hospitals but two point campus a lot of opportunity there for some shenanigans that was my exact uh saying that i said when i saw that i was like two point hospital i didn't care because i didn't care about running a hospital but that university stuff looked really cool uh the evil dead the game uh they showed off i thought that looked pretty fun it had a lot of cool references gameplay references at least to how like the evil dead was shot and everything which i thought was cool like they did the classic evil camera view for when you were playing that which i, I really enjoyed um and yeah it made me want to go watch evil dead again um there was uh jason blundell the creator of call of duty zombies teamed up with some other Treyarch veterans to start a new studio called deviation games and they announced today that they are partnering with playstation on their new IP. So that's that's a little exciting if you think about some of the other opportunities that have happened with similar partnerships like Kojima and Death Stranding, um, where essentially you have a new studio, but with a lot of talent behind it. PlayStation comes in, pumps a bunch of money into them, gives them a publishing deal, and we get something interesting coming out of it. So uh, I'll be excited to see what that is. Uh, and yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, they had well, a weird... Um, one thing, uh, Pokimane is in a movie now. Oh, I hated that. I hated that so much. I hated that so much. I thought Ryan that movie Reynolds looked movie. pretty good until they showed all those streamers. And I was yeah, like, Yeah, Ugh. basically the Ryan's Metal movie, Reynolds movie Free Guy, which basically is he plays an NPC in a GTA Online type of universe. Um, I don't know if this is a, like an outside trailer or if this was a trailer made for Games Fest, but either way, they just showed that there's a bunch of cameos like Ninja and Pokemon and a whole bunch of other stupid streamers. And I, I want to be clear. If somebody came to me and they offered me even just scale pay to be in a movie, I'd be like, heck yeah. But I don't want to go see a movie and see you pandering to my hobby like that. <laughs> you know, it's insulting. That's basically Big Bang Theory type of bullshit. Like, don't don't do yeah. that. It makes you look like an idiot. Uh, I want to say the last thing that I thought was really weird in the show, and I, I'm pretty sure I didn't miss anything. So they announced the new Coke Media uh, game li publishing yeah. label called Prime... Okay. Was it Prime Label? What's it called? Yeah, Prime Matter. And then they showed a trailer of all these games, but they never said what it was. They just showed a bunch yes. of games, and you were like, what game is this? What game is this? What game is this? And then it said Prime Matter at the end, and then they went on to the next thing. Well, no, no, no. I think... Something with painkiller games I think Jeff, Jeff said... I'm sorry, Jeff Keeley said... He was like, there we go. First look at uh, Payday 3. <laughs> And then, what? and then they, I think they brought out somebody because they said one or two other things, but they were like, "Oh yeah, we're also going to do more painkiller." Yeah. Like it was just there were big announcements in there that were just yeah. completely hidden in a publisher trailer. Which but was it, very it, like weird. it also showed Mountain Blade, uh, Banner Lord, and Kingdom Come Deliverance because they're moving under this thing, but there was no explanation. Yeah. So it's just like so it's confused. Weird. There's like yeah, seven dude. games in there that are new games, and yeah. it's just like it's crazy um anything else from this i think that was pretty much it that's the big stuff that i pulled yeah, from not this a, not a bad show um yeah for a that, that elden ring gets pretty big um, i i i now the meme about can stop. honestly yeah i'm just so freaking happy because now you idiots can shut up about it i i'm not saying you will even though you probably do fall under this but all the people who are just like we want elden ring who cares where it's gonna have elden ring and it's just like it's just one game okay calm down 
There's other games I was, that they're going to show off. I was confused by the, is Elden Ring real meme? Because it was, it's obviously real, but people kept saying, is Elden Ring even real? And I get they're being funny, but it just made me upset. Because I was like, what do you mean? Only, it's only been two years. It has not been enough time and it has not been enough controversy for you to even consider it to be vaporware. It's uh, not. I was just so, you know, always confused. So stupid. I'm looking forward to it when it comes out. I don't care how long it takes to get there. Yeah. Uh, moving back to the news, anything else here you guys want to talk about or you want to move to uh, rating the game real quick? So I, I want to talk about this Xbox. Um, this is an Xbox blog post called Bringing the Joy and Community of Gaming to Everyone. And they basically talked about the Xbox Game Pass cloud service. There's There's some tidbits in here that are pretty interesting. Um, number one, Xbox is officially working with, quote, working with global TV manufacturers to embed the Xbox experience directly into internet connected televisions with no extra hardware required except a controller. So smart TVs in the future will have an Xbox Game Pass app included in it. And what that means is that if you have a Game Pass subscription, you will be able to stream games directly to your TV and then you just hook up a controller and you're good to play, which is which is real neato. Very sweet. Um, the other big one is Xbox is building its own streaming devices for cloud gaming. So that if you think like a Chromecast or a Roku stick, Xbox will be building their own Game Pass stick. You know, let's say you you spend 50 bucks for a little 4K stick, you plug it in your TV, sync your controller, log into your Game Pass account, bam, you can play your Game Pass cloud games. Bam. Um, and then they finally put, I don't want to say dates, but they finally provided some clarity Quote, in the next few weeks, cloud gaming on the browser will open to all Xbox Game Pass Ultimate members. End quote. Um, that has not been out in the open before. It's pretty open now. I think I have it because I'm part of like the Xbox Insider program, which is easy to get into. But it's going to be rolling out to everybody soon. And then finally, finally, um, quote, we're in the final stages of updating our Microsoft data centers around the world with our latest generation of hardware, the Xbox Series X. End quote. So that means the cloud gaming experience will soon be from an Xbox Series X, um, which is pretty crazy. You're still going to have to deal with network latency, et cetera, but you're going to be running on the best console hardware and streaming from that. Is this uh, the, also the article where they said they'll be continuing to make consoles? So I, I saw a news article about people freaking out that Microsoft wasn't going to make consoles anymore. And they came out and I said, like, we will continue so. to make consoles and boxes. Um, don't yeah, worry about I, I it. I believe so cool um because yeah it's not in this but the, the, the quote was roughly like don't worry we're still going to be doing like flagship consoles we're not moving just to cloud gaming we're already working on the they didn't say we're already working on the next xbox but they're like we are already accelerating plans for the next xbox yeah. sweet uh okay let's move on to everyone's favorite segment which is the subpixel rating system folks we take one game we add it to the perfect list of the perfect games of the universe um anyone uh, we, we're not doing three games anymore we're doing one game because whew, it's a lot of discussing and i want to go to bed because i gotta work in the morning so ian and or kyle you guys got anything for me um i'll defer to the guest kyle you got any uh, suggestions um i i do but i feel like it's it's obvious oh no, um, i'm okay with an obvious one all right uh the original half-life oh oh um so i feel like i not not to take away for, actually no kyle you explain your reasons tell me where it goes um the well the reason i said it's obvious is because it, it it was such a groundbreaking game i mean it it's like the best of valve um all wrapped into this like crazy story that unfolds and and had all this new technology that was pumped into it and new gameplay mechanics that were or even if they weren't new they were refined it's it's like such a ref not now but when you look back on it at the time it was such a ridiculously refined experience and um, you know, it it led to creating this series of games that has become famous or infamous, depending on you know what your what your opinion is of the Half Life series. But I don't know. It's just it, I I remember playing that. I haven't played it in a really long time, and I know that there's been a bunch of uh, 
updates to like Black Mesa and and they're working on or have already released the Zen update for for that sort of stuff. And just the fact that the love for this game is still going on um, to this day, I think it just speaks volumes about not only how influential it was, but just how good it was, how how good of a game and how big of an impact it made on the people that played it. So that's sort of my all chips in response, I guess. Uh, where do you think yeah. it goes on this list? I think it's it's possibly number one, but I I, I also you know there's some there's some doom is is a heavy hitter. Um, I'm thinking like one or two, honestly. Um, so I, I think half Life's a fantastic game. I think something that it did really well and very groundbreaking in a way was having an FPS shooter be very story driven mm. and cinematic. Um, you know, if you just think about the way that story unfolds, uh, even just the first mission where you yeah. are. There's no shooting in the first mission. You're just going to work, meeting your coworkers, putting on your uniform, setting up the experiment, and the things start to go wrong, and this whole sense of mystery of, like, what's going on? Because there's not aliens in the game at the first start. It's just weird things start happening, and there's an invasion. You're just like, I don't know what's happening. Um, I, I think it's very good. I'm not sure that I agree with number one or two, though. I I would probably put it below Doom and above Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. And the reason why I say that is I think it's very good, but I don't think it's quite, it was, it's not as groundbreaking as Doom. No. Yeah. I mean, not, not in the sense of like, oh, it's this brand new thing, but yeah. the way it refined what, what already existed, I think was groundbreaking. Yeah. Um, I just, I'm sorry, but I cannot personally put it above Factorio or Yakuza <laughs> Zero. I'll put it above Outer Wilds all day of the week, but. <laughs> but that, um, that's the problem with this list is I look at number one and I'm like, Half Life is better than Outer Wilds. Yeah, yeah, I think we just need, you know, honestly, maybe we should rediscuss Outer Wilds at the end of this episode. Um, but I think I, 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 the reason why I'm not putting it as high as you are is just because I think for Yakuza Zero and Factorio and Half Life, they are all incredible, fantastic games that um, I don't think Yakuza 0 is necessarily revolutionary, but they are all like incredible refinements and pushing the boundaries and doing new things in their genres. Yeah. I just think that Factorio and Yakuza 0 are, I hate to boil it down to this, but just more of a game than Half-Life because Half-Life of does have like a playtime duration. You know, the, the multiplayer is fun. But it does have a playtime duration, whereas I feel like Factorio is just literally just an endless time sucker. And Yakuza yeah. Zero is just an enormous game. I feel like it it's it's hard to like and this and this is what gets down to the nitty gritty of of doing lists like these and especially like ours, because it's so vastly screwed up already. Um, is that I tend to look at games in the time that they were made and not like how I would experience them now. So mm -hmm. like like you have certain standards now that you would obviously not have or would be much lower 20 years ago. So um, <clears throat> it's sort of like I try to I try to put myself in the shoes of some or in the controller, I guess, of someone who's playing Half-Life for the first time in, you know, the the what year to come out? Uh, 97, 98. Uh, yeah, I was like, I think it was some, somewhere. 99. Was it? I'm going to say 99. I'll look it up. But, yeah, I, I try to I try to do that um, and and not judge it on how like the enjoyment that I get out of a game that's made nowadays versus the enjoyment I would have gotten out of a game that I had played, you know, 20 years ago or something. Yeah. So uh, it, that's it's that, that's just what makes it difficult for me to be like, well, this game is more fun, but this is a game from a different time. So it, it's it's it just makes it difficult. Um, yeah. But I, I, but think I think your reasons your reasons are totally valid. So. Yeah, and I think just to add on to it a little bit, I think it's it's not so much that there's more content, but also that it's doing more things really well. Yeah. You know, Half-Life does everything really well. Yakuza 0 does four times as many things really well. Mm. A, a nitty gritty again. Will, yeah. what, are you, what are you thinking? So I've only ever played the first mission of Half-Life. 
Um, good taste. That's a good taster. Yeah, uh, Chris and I were planning on doing a series, and then it got away from us. But I have it recorded, so there's evidence. Um, I genuinely think the beginning of that game is incredible from what I've played. The, like, waiting on the train car as you're going through all the different areas and, like, looking at everything. And then you arrive. Yeah, and then you arrive, and the guy's like, oh, Mr. Freeman, running a little late. And then he brings you to the door, lets you in. Everyone greets you, says hi to you. Like you said, you got to go to the locker, all that sort of stuff. It's it's one of the prime examples of a uh, immersive sim, and it's it's really good. Um, I think I would lean towards Ian with saying below Doom. Um, just as much as I played it, I feel like his reasonings are pretty good. I mean, I'm the same way with Kyle. Like I, I like to look at games. That's why I like a lot of retro games, and when they were made, like one of my big things with retro games is if they had the controls of today, there's a lot of retro games that would be incredibly successful. Um, oh, yeah. So with that in mind, uh, but I, yeah, I think I agree. I think I would throw it at new number five on the list. Okay. Yeah. Right. I mean, I'm, I'm fine with it being even, even in the top five. So I think that's great. I, I, and I think we all agree that Half-Life is better than Outer Wilds, though. Oh, totally. Yes. So I, I know you only wanted to do one game tonight, but I, I feel like we should I'm try to invoke... I'm good for another one. Let's go. Let, I, think we should re, I think we should invoke the rule, which lets us take Outer Wilds, <clears throat> and we rediscuss it. We decide a new place in the list, but it cannot be rediscussed again in the future. I'm, what do you think, Will? I'm, I'm game. I mean, I don't really want to, uh, mostly because we already added a game, but... You know what? How about the next time the three of us are on, we do it. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'll agree to that, yeah. at least. Maybe I'll have played it by then, and I can't just blindly vote down against it. Oh, that's true. I, yeah. I would recommend playing it. It's that's on pretty Game good. Pass. Game Pass. All right, I'll... <laughs> I mean, uh, f- <laughs> okay, I'm going to freaking end this thing then. Um, folks, I got to start the music, don't I? To start the music folks thank you for tuning in this week to another episode of local chat this was episode 23 joining me tonight was the illustrious i already used that ian gibson hi um i just want to let you guys know we are going to be streaming a bunch of e3 stuff this week saturday sunday 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 tuesday unfortunately uh i am going to be out of town next week so there will be zero streams next week no streams from subpixel um we'll be back in two weeks also joining us tonight was uh kyle bailey it was it was fun you know i i love doing these local chat things so thanks thanks for having me on that's great i know it's okay i don't blame you um also we will be streaming a lot of the e3 stuff this weekend uh that'll be saturday sunday and tuesday uh kyle will be streaming the tuesday stream because i literally work till like 1 p.m that day it's very annoying they just updated my schedule but oh well uh ian's away next week which means streaming all the time folks even more streams um we're doing feet streams we're doing p streams (laughs) Are we having Tarantino on? Oh. Tarantino is going to be here. Uh, we're going to be doing all sorts of stuff. Uh, it's the week without Ian, and it's it's like Christmas without Santa Claus, but better. Uh, it's going to be a great time. You can find all of our content at subpixelfilms.com, which is straight to our YouTube channel. There's also the Subpixel Streams YouTube channel to see all of our stream archives, so definitely check that out. Please support us, anchor.fm slash local chat. That'll bring you straight to this podcast where you can check us and leave us a review on iTunes, and we will see you next week.